so I want to start the highway, man. Yes. I, and I, I'm probably going to make a fool of myself because I did not research this near enough. But I, I keep seeing things with, with Spielberg. Mm -hmm. And Spielberg is up in arms because Netflix is making not movies. And these not movies are, you know, being nominated for Oscars. Maybe not necessarily winning. I think they won something. Did Roma win something? They won a couple things. A couple things. So they, they haven't won like Best Picture or anything like that yet. Right. But they're, they're slowly creeping their way up. And Spielberg's like, no, this is not cinema. And I, from what I've seen, do not understand his argument at all. And what he's saying is they're making it on basically a TV platform. It's TV. It can go win an Emmy. That's fine. It doesn't belong at the Oscars. But I think if you make a cinematic movie, and this thing is one of the most cinematic things I have seen yes. in a long time. This reminds me of old Hollywood, like golden age mm -hmm. cinema. And... To me, this is a much more of a movie than the last several things I've seen from Spielberg. I I can understand where Spielberg's coming from, and I will run to Steven's defense. All right, go for it. Uh, I just I do think there's a lot of it. Kind of sounds like he's whining a bit because of how much success he has had in life, and I think that he's probably a little bit more animated about the topic than he should be. But he's got, there's some good points. Um, the environment that you're watching on, you know, when you see a movie in a theater, is a controlled environment. The director and the intent of the film and the art, it has a way that it's supposed to be viewed, and it is viewed that way. The lighting is, is set, the sound is set a certain way. Um, there's a whole scope of what it's supposed to be that's there. Uh, when people go to see a movie in a theater, they often you get ready to go to the movie. You prepare yourself for the experience. Uh, when you see a movie on Netflix, um, you're just turning it on, you're watching it, or any streaming service, you pause it whenever you want. You don't have to watch the entire arc of the story from start to end within the amount of time that's intended. It's more convenient. I disagree that the movies should not be eligible for, for awards. If they're good film, they're good film. But there is an argument to be made that streaming services putting these movies out and not putting them in cinema to be viewed in that way could damage the integrity of filmmaking as an art. Well, but <clears throat> well, I was going to say, though, didn't Roman go to cinemas? Uh, briefly. Right. And so Spielberg wasn't complaining. I heard him say yeah. that... It was in cinema so briefly that it should not be considered a movie. And I'm thinking, well, most of the movies that win Oscars, we can't see because we can't even get to a place that screens them, you know, without driving four hours in any direction. Mm -hmm. So how is that different? Which I, I mean, I get the point too. Netflix, if you want to talk about like small films competing and stuff, well, then you've got Netflix with basically unlimited yeah. resources but so does steven spielberg so yeah. should his movies not be considered and then like there's just too many like nuances there now i do agree that they should be in a cinema but i don't care if it goes to cinema and netflix at the same time then it's a movie and like because i, I, I would have again like the green book or uh the sisters brothers and like yeah, we can't watch it. You know where I'm going to watch it? I'm going to watch it when it comes on Netflix because that's Which, how it's available to, to me. me. Since those cinema movies do eventually make their way to home video to Netflix anyway, it kind of takes all the air out of the argument as far as I'm concerned. Well, and most of the celebrities watch them on private screenings at their home yeah. anyway. So there goes our... Yeah, why don't we take away two of the 14 daily screenings of Ready Player One so we can watch something yeah, worth watching? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, here's here's the thing <laughs> that has nothing to do with this specific film, that this is emblematic of a political and cultural shift that's going on in the country right now, where years ago you had people that could go and see high art. Okay, they yeah. can go see orchestras playing in a, in a. Making sure I was wearing my hipster glasses oh. for this. <laughs> you can see orchestras and operas playing in opera houses, and only the richest people could go there. And then you had other people, they couldn't afford that. But what they could do is go to a blues club, or they could go to a honky tonk, and they could listen to a country band, or a rock band, or a jazz band play. And then 
that was seen as low art. That's not real music. And then things changed and became more democratic. You had more people that were able to go to concerts. You had the explosion. You know, Queen, I think, really is is where there was that shift of, you know, everyone can go see good music live in a big venue around other people. And now you have the idea of, well, what if we can't get to the East Coast? What if we can't go to Los Angeles or New York to see a premiere of a specific movie? You're, you're not offering us the same opportunities. We're the middle of America. We're that middle class that's kind of getting ignored. So do you feel it's kind of mustache twirling, monocle wearing? Like, is it is it elitism that, that's driving I this? Think or he's, it... I think he's out of touch with where most people are ever since him and George Lucas and the, you know, that group of people, uh, they, their last impression of what the real world was, was whenever they were in high, uh, college together, making yeah. their first movies. Ever since then, they, they're just out of touch and they still see things through that perspective. Mm -hmm. like you, you can't get people who are working two jobs, who, who work a 40 hour, or, excuse me, who work two 30 hour jobs a week in order to make ends meet and then there are Lyft drivers or Uber drivers in between to be able to dedicate time during you know, 2 p.m. in the afternoon to 9 p.m. at night to go to a cinema and see a movie. Their only chance is going to be 3 a.m. in the morning when they're trying to catch some sleep to watch half of a movie and then come back and watch the other half the following day. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to let people see any art, they've got to adapt to the, the upcoming. But Well, so I'll, I don't know because I have so I have two feelings on this, because if you go somewhere and it doesn't matter, sport, movie, anything in competition, right? So the Oscars is a competition. Somebody votes, somebody wins. If you go somewhere and you're like, but I'm a little fish and I'm having to compete out of my league, this isn't really fair that I have to compete because I'm going to lose. I don't have the money, I don't have the resources, I don't have the actors won't come work for me, I don't have anything. And that's true of anything. If I'm playing high school basketball, I don't want to go play the college teams. If I'm playing 1A basketball, I don't want to play the 6A teams. I'm just, that's not fair. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, once you reach a certain level, it's like, all right, if you're going to win, you know, the top prize that you can win. So the best picture Oscar is, would we all agree, is like that's the biggest award you can get as a filmmaker is you have the best Oscar winner, best, best picture. Best picture, best director. Yeah, yeah okay. Those two would be. Well, if you're going to win that, then it ought to be all bets are off whoever puts out the best movie you win. And the only way you win is to put the best movie. And that's the way it should be. And if you ever want to be better, then you have to come, like, so many times in life I've done stuff, thought I was good, and then I saw somebody do it, and I'm like, ooh, he's a lot yeah. better than I am. <laughs> but if you go play it at their level, you're gonna get beat, but you you start rising. And then you can go back to where you were, and you'll be amazed at how much better you are, and you're like, wow, these people I used to play with or used to compete against kind of suck, you know, <laughs> I didn't really. And so I don't like him being at the top and going, yep, yeah, no, no, y'all can't come play in our house. Go away. That's Go how it is with music, though. I think music is a really good analogy for this. When you look at who wins uh, the American Music Awards, the Billboard Awards, it's not the person who was uh, the most inventive or told the best story using song. It's not the it's not it's not really the best album of the year. It's the person that had the widest distribution and sold the most CDs to the widest audience based upon whatever 20 year old alliances are still going on in the music industry. You know, whatever gets radio play, those are your contenders for the, the best movie or the best uh, songs of the year and the best albums of the year. And that's been a strategy that they've been using for the last 60 years. I mean, there are underground people, there are technically talented musicians that you'll never hear of that are hands down the best in the world. Well, I'm sure, I mean, that's true for anything. Yeah. Pick a sport. There's probably a guy in, you know, Kenya right now that's the best basketball player that ever lived and we'll never we'll never see him because he'll never get an opportunity. Nobody will ever find him. There's probably, you know, some guy in Russia right now that's gonna be the best hockey player that there ever was and you'll never see him and never hear him. I mean you can name anything and there's somebody that didn't get the opportunity and get the, the chance to do it. And that's just kind of the world we live in. But what I, but I just wholeheartedly disagree with someone standing at the top and going, nope, 
don't you don't get your chance because you you chose a different platform or a different person gave you money to make that film than gave me money to make this film so you can't play at my house. And aren't we always playing someone else's game? You have to play by the rules. Well, that's why I said, and I get it. Like <laughs> I, I get it at lower levels, but once you reach that like upper echelon, and we are the like Oscars, it are to be the best movie. I don't care where it. And again, like there are things like. You said controlling the, you know, the lights and the yeah. theater, and we made it for the big screen. Okay, well, fine. So if you want to say it has to be in a theater, then you know, put some rules forth. And and I'm sure Netflix, if they got a movie, if you say, all right, it's got to be in the theater for ten days, and it's got to have a distribution of twenty theaters, then Netflix will put it in, you sure. know, twenty theaters if, for ten if days. If it's a written rule, I get it, and I'd be totally behind what he said. Far as I know, there's not any written rule, just that it has to be in theaters Actually, at some point. I would love if there was like a 15 second disclaimer in front of like the serious films on Netflix. If it said intended to be watched, you know, with lights off on surround sound uh, or intended to be watched in native language. If it's a foreign film, um, if they had viewer instructions or suggestions, that'd be awesome. Or like just paired with the uh, Moscato. <laughs> this one is extra butter and pizza. popcorn. Yeah. 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 All right, so I guess we should talk about the show a little bit. Anyway. Oh, yeah. So, in <laughs> summary, see Highwaymen. I do have a final yeah, thought on really the Oscars good. if you want me to jump down. Okay, there. go ahead. Go ahead. I, I gave up on the Oscars a few years ago for a series of like little things that really annoyed me. Um, and oddly enough, sci-fi movies getting a snub is not one of them. Should have been, because they never get recognition. Yeah. But the... Uh, I'm going to draw some hate for this. <laughs> Slumdog Millionaire winning Best Picture really made me mad. Not because it won, not because, I'm not saying it's a bad movie, it's a foreign film. They have a category, Best Foreign Film. That's the category it should have been eligible for. But so instead, you... it got Best Picture. And I forget what was contending for Best Picture that, was, that I liked better, I don't remember now, <laughs> but that made me mad. Again, I don't have that problem, because if you're going to have the Best Picture, then it should be the Best Well, and picture. right, anyway, I don't, then no, don't have a Best Foreign Film us. category. Does it really qualify as best foreign film? It was primarily in a foreign language, but it was like Warner Brothers and Fox. They distributed it. It was produced like in India or wherever that guy's from. It was from. directed by Danny Boyle. It's Danny Boyle. But I'm supposed to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 28 Days Later was a foreign film. Well, there you go. No, was... I don't know. Anyway. Um, it's just as foreign as train spotting. The uh, <laughs> couple of years after that, the movie Song of the Sea, which is a cartoon. I know you didn't like it, and that's mm -hmm. fine. The, the and it could be a rumor, but it sounded just plausible enough that I believe it. The all of the, nobody voted for it at all. Like all the people who vote in that academy, just like I don't know what that is. This is a Disney movie. Let's vote for that. That's what I heard, and I believe it completely. Well, there was that thing. What was it uh, Thirteen Years a Slave when they had people that like the yeah I didn't watch it, but I yes, knew it was and I voted that for kind it. of thing. So it's. I mean, the Oscars are fun, but I have just kind of given up on them as I'm oh, I mean, because yeah. they always pick really horrible movies for Best Picture. And, and not, always, not always. Some of them are great. But some, uh, I think there's like, been like three I really enjoyed that were Best Picture. Right. Like, and I don't really care. It's, I, didn't, I didn't. I hadn't watched the Oscars in years. I don't really care. Yeah. But I, I, there's just something, like I said, There's some. it almost feels like a bully when Steven yeah. Spielberg, who really is, I mean, he's at the top of the game, right? I mean used to until the last few movies if you put his name on something it was, I was going to go to the theater to watch it it was going to be good and I was going to enjoy it mm -hmm. and to put his name on something just meant greatness to yeah, me absolutely. And, and so I would definitely say he's like if you ask people to name the most famous director in the world I would say he would be on most people's I think two people come to my mind Steven Spielberg and Alfred Hitchcock those are the first two guys that came to mind I, yeah but nobody under Right, like yeah. thirty knows who Albert Hitchcock is. Probably no one thirty knows who Spielberg is. But uh, <laughs> Ron Howard. Okay, so Ron, Ron Howard's really Ron Howard's, yeah. Am I wrong? Was it an American movie? Um, I will I, admit it. I will admit I was wrong. It, it definitely wasn't American. We, we know that much. But I I don't know if it will qualify as as foreign or not because it could have been. They they lump all the European stuff in with it too. They don't consider European stuff foreign. But, but it is. <laughs> but here, here are the here are the nominees from that year, and you can tell me if you think someone else should have won. So there was also Benjamin Button, no. Ross Nixon. I did no. like Benjamin Button. Milk, and the, and the Reader. I think that I like the Reader. 
I didn't, yeah. I didn't see that. I like so, Milk better than So Slumdog that makes it even worse. I wasn't even jilted by something not winning Best Picture, unless it was something that wasn't even nominated. <laughs> well, that, that, was, that, was, what uh, year? that was 2009's awards for movies in 2008. So here's the thing. That was the Dark Knight year, whenever Heath Ledger that won was Supporting movie. Actor, but then... Uh, Dark Knight wasn't even nominated for Best Picture, yeah. and a lot of people thought that that was ridiculous because it should have at least Actually, been nominated. Didn't uh, did Black Panther get nominated for Best Picture? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Dark Knight was way better than Black Panther. There was a Star Trek, movie it, especially if you talk about like one Best Makeup. Yeah. If if you talk about like Oscar, you know, type movies, I would say the Dark Knight. Yeah. Way more Oscar-y than uh, or, Black Panther was. Or no, that was the following year because the movies are made the one year, then the Academy Awards the next year. Because I remember Avatar was against it for and did not win Best Picture because the Hurt Locker won it. That would have been 2010. Anyway, yeah. sorry. We can finish this now and go on to the Highway Minute <laughs> if you're already ready. <laughs> the stuff that Black Panther did win, they I think was very deserving, which is like just, costuming and... Oh, well, absolutely. Great, great costuming, yeah. great scenery, great... Like, all the art direction was fantastic. And the story was fine. Like, it wasn't a bad movie by any means. It got a little overhyped, that's all. One of the movies I've enjoyed the most over the past two or three years couldn't even find theatrical distribution. Uh, did anyone see Tragedy Girls? Never heard of it. Never no, even heard of it. It's on Hulu. Uh, I think Craig Robinson uh, was, was in it and may have produced it. But uh, it's about a couple of girls who uh, decide that they're going to uh, start killing people around their school and oh. uh, putting it on social media. And uh, they become a big kind of national sensation. And wasn't there another movie that had a very similar plot that did get distribution? I, I think so. <laughs> Wait for it. it was like some like something assassins or something or like assassins girls or something. It was very similar I don't know. in terms of what you're describing. Oh, this on Hulu. Watch yeah. it. It's kind of fun. Try it. It ended up grossing like thirty-seven thousand in theaters. 